This is Personal Injury Court. Good day, everyone. This is the matter of Anson versus the municipality of Dillon. Mr. Harrell, you're here representing the municipality of Dillon, right? Yes, Your Honor. Ms. Anson, you are suing the municipality of Dillon for injuries you received when you were walking your dog in the park in this municipality. You're asking this court to award you $82,000 for past medicals, $20,000 for lost wages, $75,000 for pain and suffering for a total award of $177,000. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. And Mr. Harold, you represent the city of Dillon. You all believe that she's responsible for her own injuries. This is not your fault. That is correct, Your Honor. All right, well, let's get into the legal sauce. Uh, is my understanding that you were walking your dog. Tell me about that. Why this park? Your Honor, I live in a beautiful neighborhood, and it's located with a fountain park and also a doggy park. I've lived there for about eight years now. I was recently diagnosed with anthrosclerosis, which is a hardening of the arteries. Okay. And so I need to exercise daily. I have to exercise due to my health and per my doctor. So I go to this park for about 30, 35 minutes every day to walk my dog, Ziggy. Okay, what kind of dog is Ziggy? He's a Shih Tzu. There he is right there. <laughs> yeah, those That's are great, my baby. great dogs. Mine was, uh, I had a Shih Tzu too, and it was uh, called Zulu. So, yeah, <laughs> great dogs. Okay, now, Mr. Harold, this park where, that brought us here today, tell me about this park. Well, Yon, I like to say that um, I do represent the city of Dillon, and I will say that we take great pride. We have at least a dozen parks right here within the city limits. Okay. And everyone moves here just to become part of the great outdoors there. Now, the city main focus is family and the community, mm. okay? Our fountains, a source of fun, if you say. Now, on this day, there wasn't fun, so uh, tell me about it. Okay, Yaron. The doggy park is located right near the fountain park. So around 6 a.m. in the morning, I looked outside and I noticed that it was these huge bubbles just overflowing, going everywhere. And that's not normal. So I decided to call 911 to let them know about the emergency because it looks like it was going to escalate to something more. So I laid back down once I made the phone call and I woke back up around 8, 8.30 because that's what time I usually take Ziggy for a walk. Yes, ma'am. And I looked outside and I noticed that it was gone. It looked like it was clinked up. So that was good for me. It was as safe. in no bubbles? There was a few, but it was lower. It wasn't as high as it was. Okay. So it was safe enough for me to go for my walk. And, Your Honor, I do have an exhibit to show you, if you don't mind. Uh, yes, ma'am, please. Okay. Take your time. Come to the uh, plasma screen and show me how this happened. Thank you, Your Honor. Bear with me. So tell me what we're looking at and uh, explain this for me. Your Honor, this is me and this is Ziggy. And we're inside of the doggy park. And as you can see, Your Honor, this gate doesn't close all the way. The city was notified several times and it does not close. So at this point, I'm going to unleash Ziggy. And he gets distracted by these bubbles that are going everywhere. And he runs towards the bubbles. So at, as you can see, they're going everywhere. I run and bang, I hit my knee against this iron metal bench that I can no longer see. And the bubbles are escalating. I mean, Your Honor, it was like a giant snowman that was just coming up from nowhere. The bubbles start going everywhere. It was blinding me. And I hit my knee and it gushes open and it was blood everywhere. Let me go back, because I want to see where this bench is. Sure. Is that the bench you hit? Yes, that is the iron bench that hit my knee, and I'm there screaming for help, and that's when someone came and assisted me. Okay, ma'am, you can return to the podium. Thank, Thank you. you. Now, Mr. Harold, do you know about the first 911 call at 6 o'clock in the morning? Uh, yes, I do, Your Honor. Tell me what the municipality's response is. Well, Your Honor, the uh, police department got a 911 phone call roughly about 6 a.m. that morning in reference to the bubbles. Now, our um, uh, park employees, they don't arrive until 9 a.m. Now, my cleanup crew, unfortunately, but they were able to get to the scene where the bubbles were at 10. And they cleaned up these bubbles. Now, I will say these bubbles stood every bit about, I don't know, eight feet high. Miss Anson talked about the bubbles going down. Or there was a lot less bubbles where she felt safe to let her dog go. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, how did they come back up? What, what, what makes that happen? Just knowing the fountains, they cut on and off themselves. So okay. from 
my knowledge, what I think happened was when the fountain cut off, the bubbles dissipated. And when it came back on, when she, you know, I guess decided to walk her dog, that's when the bubbles started back, when the fountain kicked back on. From what I understand, the prankster actually did this. Oh. Now, we do have our records showing uh, on the surveillance camera that the prankster came in and put some type of detergent of some sort in the fountain, which caused the bubbles to spew out. Which is why you should have came earlier to clean up the mess, and it wouldn't have been eight feet by the time sir, it came. So how did Protocol. you find out about the prankster? Well, on the surveillance camera, we saw um, he or she came in early that morning, but unfortunately, we could not see their face because they had on a mask. Okay. So we're still we're not working on getting the uh, identity to try and get this case solved with that situation as well. It was well. probably him. You said these bubbles, this wall of bubbles was eight feet high? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. and, and the part that really gets me about that, if she saw that the bubbles were eight feet high and spewing over the place, I mean, common sense would have told her to Common enter sense from a would have told you when you got a safer. phone call at I mean, 6 o'clock like to not come at 10 o'clock. You see an accident, you're going to drive right into the accident or go around the if dog I saw bubbles, If I saw bubbles I mean, at my no job, if I'm, am I not supposed to go to work just because there's bubbles? I chased after my baby. This is my baby, Your Honor. If you are a parent, if this is your dog, you're going to chase after her to make sure sure that he's safe. Mr. Harold, let's say a three-year-old runs into those bubbles. What's she supposed to do? Well, you know, folks these days, I mean, my nine-pound Morky is kind of my fourth son in a, in a lot yeah. of respect. Now, by this being out of our control totally, if it was me, I would took more precaution entering something that I could not see. This is the only way for me to enter into the park. And when I first... I don't know if he needs a hearing aid, because I said it earlier. Mm. When I looked outside, there was no bubbles. It was safe enough for me to go. And he just stated that the fountain goes on and off. I guess it's on a timer. Well, so once when... this wall goes up and your dog goes into the wall, couldn't you have waited until the bubbles dissipated? Thank you. No, because I didn't know that it was on a timer until he just mentioned that. I'm trying to rescue my baby. I'm trying to follow his bark, and that's when I hit my knee on the bench. If I, if I must say, there has been no report of that gate having a malfunction at all. That is My thing honor. is this. There are rules of the park. She knows the rules. What rules are you talking about? That you're supposed to keep the dog on a leash at all times. The time. dog was on My a leash. My point is here, anytime the dogs are inside a, uh, the dog park where the gate is, it's okay to let the dog off the leash if you Which close is what the I gate did. behind you. The gate but, is not working. But my point is, Your Honor, if she knew the gate wasn't working, why the heck did she let the dog off the leash? There's Should no sign, Your Honor. Leash? Did you no see a sign. sign out there? No, there's no sign oh, that no, says please, the gate There's several used. signs well, around the park with that. A sign. I don't see it. Oh, I don't hold see on. She's blowing a bunch of smoke. I couldn't see anything with these bubbles in my face. How can I Ms. possibly Anson, see it? Talk to me. He said that it's posted out there. Did you see this sign, Miss Anson? I did not see that sign, Your Honor. No, probably. You know they are. Oh, well, you should have been out there earlier to get it. Whatever. You said that you walk your dog every day. I walk my dog every day, and i never seen this sign, Your Honor. Oh, please. I don't know if he just put that out there when he came well, there, at 10 o'clock. There are I've only two possibilities. Either it wasn't there, or you weren't paying attention to it. I pay attention to everything, Your Honor. That sign was not there. Mr. Harold, where is this sign posted in the park? Your Honor, he don't know. These, we have these signs posted <laughs> on all the poles around the park. No matter how you enter, no matter where you walk, so you're she should have seen this sign. Absolutely, she's a longtime resident. She knows. Your Honor, the rules can you show park. me a photo of the sign near the dog park? Is there one that's together? No, it isn't, because you just made that up. There's no you know sign. What? So, Miss Anson, tell me, you said you slammed your knee into this iron park bench. Yes. And you used the word gushed. As you can see, my knee was gushed open, blood dripping everywhere. I tried to warm it up and put some antibacterial spray on it as well as an ice pack. But as soon as I start trying to walk on my knee or trying to do anything on my leg, the pain starts to progress. So a couple days later, I went to the emergency room. A couple needed, days later, Your Honor? A couple Your Honor, days later. A couple Your Honor, days later? Your Honor, two days it later. Been that let bad. me explain. Let me explain. Two days later, I had to get stitches. And then after the stitches, there's the picture, Your Honor. After the stitches, Your Honor, I had to that's go ugly. back. It is. It's, it's very disturbing. Because... That's, that's what your knee looked like two days after. Yes. Yes, I, I see you've submitted $82,000 Worth of medical, medical. Bill. Yes, because I'm in physical therapy, I lost wages of over $20,000. Yes, ma'am, I see like that. Like I said, I'm a dental hygienist, so I'm on my feet all the time. How'd and you I'm... get $82,000 in medical bills? I had a severe severe surgery, Your Honor, and it was infected. And I'm still going to the hospital right now because of this injury. So, Mr. Harold, she, she bumps into your park bench. Mm. You represent the municipality. Yes. She gets hurt on your bench. Why wouldn't this be your fault? 
Because, simple fact, the prankster did it. It was out of our control. We should not be to blame for someone else coming in, uh, vandalizing our, uh, our property out there. You are responsible for making sure that the park is safe. It's your job. And if you can't do your job, then he needs to be replaced. Well, to further understand your injuries, the court has consulted Dr. Samantha Brown Parks. Sheriff Matt, will you get the doctor for yes, us? Your Honor. Thank you. So irresponsible. Really? <laughs> Hello, doctor. Hi, Your Honor. How are you? Great. Could you please describe the nature of the plaintiff's injuries? Absolutely. So our plaintiff had an infrapatellar, or just below the knee, gash. It bled a lot. It looked really deep. She walked around for a couple days. But because it's a flexor joint, as she moved around to pick up her dog, to do her housework, it actually pulled the wound farther mm -hmm. apart. That little tiny wound got infected with dirty wounds the emergency room can't sew it all the way up nice and pretty like a plastic surgeon. So we put in just a couple sutures to hold it together so that she can still move around and let it heal on its own and let the pus come out. Unfortunately for our plaintiff, it progressed. So the bacteria that was living in here actually tracked all the way down her leg in between the fascial planes. So that's the coating that's on the meat that you get from the grocery store, that white coating. It got inside that coating and turned into a giant exploding pus pocket. Doc, I could, you're, I you're could gonna lose turn my me leg, into a Garner. vegetarian here. In this particular case, the whole reason she was trying to walk more is because of her newly diagnosed atherosclerosis. So how does that affect her healing, Doc? So as her normal artery becomes smaller before the wound, now, just think about all of that pressure of the pus pocket inside that fascial plane, squeezing even more. So is it fair to say that to be walking around, she's really fortunate? We're fortunate that the plaintiff didn't lose her leg. Thank you, doctor. Thank you. You are released. We appreciate you. I think I've heard what I need to hear, folks. I'm ready to render my decision. In every personal injury case, the plaintiff, you, Miss Anson, you've got to prove three things. You've got to prove that the municipality of Dillon was wrong, that they did something wrong, and that their wrong caused your injuries. Here, you've put up evidence that the municipality of Dillon did not clean up the bubbles in time. You also say it was an emergency to follow your dog into those bubbles, and you should not be held responsible for what turned out to be a terrible, terrible Absolutely. injury. Mr. Harold, on behalf of the municipality, you believe that if she had simply kept Ziggy on the leash, mm -hmm. and even after he was off the leash, if she had simply waited and let Ziggy come back to her, then this would have never happened. That's correct, yeah. She and the prankster, you, you blame all of this on the prankster, really, right? He was That's at home correct. asleep. Whenever there are multiple causes, potential causes for any outcome, every judge has to weigh the uh, various causes and assign value to them, percentages. It can only be 100%. The prankster has to get something. That's called apportionment. The second legal principle is what does a municipality do after they get reasonable notice of a problem? No. How much time is reasonable? Mm -hmm. Three, four hours? There's no judge in the world that's going to find that to be reasonable, regardless of what time your workers came to work that day. So I find you've proven that the municipality right, was wrong. Honor. That's right. But Ms. Anson, don't start celebrating now because the third principle is called contributory negligence. In this case, three responsible forces came together. The prankster, the city not coming out in time, and you letting Ziggy off the leash and walking into this wall of bubbles, and you must be held responsible. I find the prankster is 10% responsible. I find you are 30% responsible, and I find the municipality is 60% responsible. I enter a verdict in favor of the plaintiff for what represents 60% of what you are asking for. You're asking for $177,000. I am awarding to you 60% of that, which is $106,200 in your favor against the municipality. That's my final verdict, and this matter is adjourned. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. 
Our attorneys across America just viewed this case for the first time. Let's hear what Hoyt Tessner has to say. Hazardous conditions must be corrected or marked. Judge Gino determined that the municipality failed to timely clean up the bubble spills or warn people not to walk through them. In some states, plaintiff would have no recovery because she was not more careful and should have closed the gate before she took her dog off the leash. Please always use common sense, protect yourself, and think before you act.